Hi, I'm Gary Sims, author of the book Learning FreeNAS and the webmaster of the LearnFreeNAS.com website. Today we're going to look at configuring RAID 5 on a FreeNAS server. Here we have the FreeNAS web interface and to add disks to the system we click on Disks Management. Each disk we want to use needs to be added to the FreeNAS system so the system knows what disks it has to use. To do that we click the blue plus circle here on the right hand side and then we'll be able to add our first disk to the system. Here's our first disk, AD0, a 2 gigabyte disk on this test system. And for RAID 5, we need to select pre-formatted file system to be software RAID, and then click Add. For RAID 5, we need a minimum of three disks, so we're going to have to add two more disks to the system now. RAID 5 gives you improved performance as well as redundancy. Let's add our second disk. Here we're going to add our second disk, AD1, again setting it to software RAID. If one of the disks fails in a RAID 5 system, the other two disks carry on working and contain all of the data and there's no data loss. And now we'll add our third disk. Here it is again, AD3, software RAID and add. If there has been a failure you can replace the broken disk and then the three disks will be synchronized again. The RAID array will be rebuilt so that it contains all of the information and nothing will have been lost. If your hardware supports it this can be done in uh, without turning off the server. It could be hot swapping. Now the next stage is to go to the disks software RAID page where here we can define the software RAID that we want to create. We're going to use RAID 5 here we can see that FreeNAS supports RAID 0 and RAID 1 as well as RAID 5. Click the Add circle to add our RAID 5 array. Each of the RAID levels has their different advantages. RAID 5 here, using all three disks, and then create an initializer. RAID 1, for example, only needs two disks because that's a mirroring system. Now once this RAID is created, here it is now, we can apply the changes, we'll be able to go to the format page and format this RAID array just as if it was one disk. And here we can see that there is a, a RAID 5 created and it's in the status of rebuilding and it's very important that you wait as the note says here until this says complete before we go onto the format page. So we'll click the RAID 5 tab again to get an update of that and hopefully we'll see, no it's still rebuilding so we'll wait a moment. Now an interesting thing to notice is the RAID size, the size of this RAID array is 4 gigabytes. We've added three disks, each of 2 gigabytes each. Now obviously 2 times 3 is 6, so we would expect 6 gigabytes. But actually what happens is, is that because a third of the space is used for storing redundancy information, so that if a disk fails, the rest of the system can carry on working, you get uh, one third less of the space available for uh, storage but of course in benefit you get the uh, redundancy this should be rebuilt soon and then we'll be able to move on to the formatting page clicking on the information tab will tell us some low level details about the thing and we can see here that it says it's 69% rebuilt so in a moment it will be completely so we'll go back to the manage raid tab and maybe in a minute that will be completely done just try that one more time So now we can see this RAID is complete. So we now go down to the format page and we'll be able to format this RAID array as if it was just a normal logical one single disk. It won't see three disks, so here when we choose disk we'll just see one which is called RAID 5 which is of four gigabytes but physically it's made up of three disks. Now we can give it a name RAID 5 and we can format the disk. Do we really want to format it? Yes we do. This will go away and format all three disks together as one RAID set. And here we're coming out with the output, and you can see at the end the reassuring done telling us that it's all been 
successful. And that's it. Now you can go on and you can configure the Windows networking, you can configure NFS, Apple file, sharing, any other of the protocols that FreeNAS supports, and that disk will be available to the whole network. Well, thanks for watching. You can get more tips on using FreeNAS at the learnfreenas.com website. And of course, my book, Learning FreeNAS, is available on Amazon. Thank you.